Okay, now that we've gone through an overview of digital marketing strategy, let's step through the major components of how you put together a digital marketing strategy. Well, the first one, of course, as we mentioned, is understanding the context that within which the firm operates, right? Really understanding how the firm relates to both itself and to its competitors and to the environment around it, as well as its customers, right? And one place to start with is what's sometimes known as the PESEL framework, right? And the idea here is that there are uh, six major components that you need to consider when thinking about the context of the firm in the overall environment that it operates. Political, how does the government intervention affect the firm? Are there laws, are there regulations that affect the operations that the firm can make? Uh, economic, how does the economy relate to the firm? Social, what beliefs and attitudes of the consumers affect the firm? Technological, how is technology affecting the firm? Um, is, or is there new technology coming out soon that might dramatically affect the firm's offering? Uh, environmental, how should the firm take into account environmental issues such as waste, recycling, climate change, things like this? Uh, legal, and what legal factors are important, right? Now, in each of these cases, right, it's not necessarily that any one of these will necessarily affect your digital marketing strategy, but you need to think about them and think about how they might help, they might affect the way you're going to possibly craft a message. You obviously don't want to put out messages that are, well, for definitely not illegal messages, but also messages that might cause you problems in terms of the conflicting with the, so the social beliefs of the consumers you're interacting with, the economic needs of those consumer target markets, right? Um, for statements that, for instance, totally undervalue technological changes that are occurring within the system, right? If you're putting out a solution that's going to be obsolete in six months, that's not something you want to discuss a lot in your digital marketing strategy. And these uh, six uh, different questions are not necessarily always useful as end products in and of themselves, but a lot of times they can actually help you identify threats that you might work into a SWOT context, context, a SWOT analysis, which we'll discuss in a little bit, but looking at the strength, weeks, opportunities, and threats to the firm, for instance. Uh, so besides, one of the major components of understanding the context is obviously understanding your consumer, right? You need to think about what kind of market research that you will be able to do or that you can use that you already have to understand your customers. Especially you want to think about in a digital case, which of those customers is, a, what is um, interacting with digital media on a regular basis, right? And at, is that the target market you want to reach out to? Uh, moreover, you want to think about the fact, is it possible and do you have examples of, in your past experiences with your consumers, people who are able to be turned from a mere consumer to an advocate on social media, right, or on digital media in general. One of the benefits of digital media, one of the true kind of uh, uh, egalitarian aspects of it is that anybody who's on there can express their opinion to a large extent, right? And what your goal is a lot of times with digital marketing nowadays is not necessarily to push your message as much as possible on all the consumers you see out there, but to figure out which of those consumers you can truly switch into advocates for your firm so that they're pushing the message themselves. After all, we've known since the beginning of marketing research that what consumers say to each other has a much more dramatic impact on their decision to make a purchase than anything that an advertiser says to them, right? Uh, and so as a result, of that, it's much more important for you to kind of engage with your consumers and turn them into advocates in the context where you can. Now, of course, you also need to understand your competition. You need to understand who they are. You need to understand how they are operating the digital space. Um, and attention often matters just as much as money in the digital space. So if you are able to attract attention to your website, attract it away from your competitors, you are in the end going to do uh, much better in this space. You also need to think broadly about competition. Too often in the digital world uh, or in the marketing world in general, um, companies think very narrowly about like, here are the people who are offering the same product as us. But digital marketing, a lot of times you're competing both in an online context and an offline context. There might be a, you might be a brick and mortar store that has a digital website, um, but you're competing almost automatically with any online store that sells a similar class of products. Uh, for a lot of retail stores, there's a problem with things like Amazon, for instance, right, that are a competitor to any of the different individual retail stores out there. 
You also need to think about firms that might be disruptive. Maybe there are firms out there who are potentially offering a solution that you're not even thinking about. Of course, there's been some classic examples recently, like the hotel industry and the Airbnb properties, right? Or uh, the taxi service and Uber, for instance, right? So you need to keep an eye out on all times as to how your competition might be changing. And that's going to dramatically affect how you offer, what kinds of digital marketing message you offer. Moreover, you need to just not you need to think not just about market share in your particular target market, but wallet share. A lot of times, a customer may not buy from you not because they're buying from your competitor, but because they're buying from another part. There, there's something else that that competes for that money in their wallet, right? So, if you think about this in the entertainment space, for instance, it might be that a person decides not to go to Disney World not because they are going to Universal Studios instead, but they're going to spend their entertainment dollars in another context that year right so you need to think about broadly who are you competing for not just within the market but also for the wallet and the dollars that are there as well um, you can use traditional building blocks, traditional market building blocks to start to build up this context and understanding of the firm, right? Like Porter's Five Forces, the Four Ps, and a SWOT analysis, right? Um, and many of these terms you should be familiar with by the point at which you're taking this class. Um, I'll quickly review them, but you know I'd encourage you to look back towards your more core marketing uh, uh, examples for many of these, right? So Porter's Five Forces gives you a framework by which you can understand how competitive a particular industry is and how that competition might affect the, the firm's ability, right? You need to think about things like the bargaining power of suppliers who's supplying you with, with the goods and services you need, how you might be able to, how tight much control they have over those needs so that you can make decisions as to whether or not you could, for instance, offer a price discount in a similar space. You also need to think about the bargaining power of your customers, which is growing in the, in the digital space, right? With digital access to more and more information, your customers know more and more about how much they could possibly get out of you in terms of what they're willing to pay for a product, right? Um, and so as a result, they're having, they're having an increasing bargaining power across the board, right? But you need to consider within the context you're looking at. Are there going to be new entrants, right? Is there a possibility that something, a new company could come in? Is there a threat of substitute products, right? And this, again, gets back to like the wallet share discussion we were having. Is there something else that someone could replace your product with? And finally, even within the industry, what is the competitive rivalry that exists, right? And so you need to think through those notions when designing a digital marketing strategy. Of course, you also need to think about the traditional four Ps. What is the, what is the product? In, in the digital case, is the product real or virtual? Price, do you even charge a price? Is it a freemium product where you're going to charge a premium price later on but give it away for free at first? You need to consider these options when designing your new digital marketing strategy. Placement, is it online only or click and brick? And by that we mean that there is a website where you can purchase things and send them uh, to a retailer or wholesaler as it might be. And promotion. There are millions of different channels nowadays by which you can promote your product. Which of those are you going to concentrate on, right? Uh, and this is a vital question when deciding how you're going to think about your digital marketing strategy and laying these things out. Reconsidering these questions on a regular basis is a vital aspect of a thriving and growing company. As mentioned previously, another tool that you can use to assess the context of a company is a SWOT analysis, right? And SWOT stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Strength and weaknesses are internal to the company, meaning they would not exist if the company did exist. Opportunities and threats are things that are external to the company, things that would not exist, it would exist even if the company didn't exist. Strengths and opportunities are obviously helpful things, weaknesses and threats are negative things. And the goal a lot of times is to turn threats into opportunities and weaknesses into strengths, right? So a strength of a company, for instance, might be that you have a committed staff of engineers who are really creative and think well about the product design and maybe even have a patent on your product design, right? A weakness might be that you lack the money and the funds to really take out a, a broad uh, advertising approach. Now, when we turn your weakness into a strength might be to instead work, concentrate on a, a social media kind of guerrilla style approach to marketing your firm, right? 
um, which would make it a strength if it takes off, right? An opportunity might be that, you know, whatever product you're making, there is currently in the marketplace an increasing demand for that product, right? Uh, so imagine you're developing a brand new tablet, for instance, right? And there's a lot of demand for tablet computing, right? That might be seen as an opportunity. A threat might be something that you see coming down the line or that already exists that might potentially weaken that problem. Now, imagine that you're... you're um, for instance, imagine that there's a push away from tablet computing for whatever reason to more portable laptop devices or just using your phone instead, right? That might be seen as a threat. It's external to the firm, right? But it's something that could potentially threaten your business in this particular context, right? So thinking about SWOT is important when thinking about how to design your digital marketing strategy because it's going to talk about what elements you're going to emphasize, what elements you're going to try to avoid, and how you might turn those in, uh, weaknesses into strengths and threats and opportunities. Of course, once you've gone through assessing the company, assessing where it stands, how it relates to the different components, you need to also think about what is your firm's value proposition? What is What are you exchanging with the consumer? How do you add to the market? And what aspects of the firm do customers find the most valuable? As part of that, you're gonna to wanna to try and undertake a deep understanding of the brand itself. What does the brand stand for? What does it mean? What associations, ideas, emotions does the brand create? What is the brand's value proposition? What do people think they're getting when they purchase from the brand? Without having answers to these questions, it's really hard to start to think about how to develop digital marketing strategy. Now you've gotten that. You've got your situation described. You've got your um, company itself described. You've got the brand nailed down a little bit better. You need to start identifying what the objectives of the new digital marketing strategy are can be. And a lot of times you want to develop what are called SMART objectives, right? SMART stands for specific, measurable, assignable, realistic, and time-related, right? So you need to think about, so rather than writing a goal, something along the lines of the digital marketing campaign will achieve the objective of increasing brand awareness, you need to think about something like what is the specific area? So brand awareness, clearly it. How will you measure it? maybe a survey of consumers online, right? And so we will say that, you know, using a survey of consumers, we will measure whether they've heard of the brand within the last three weeks or something like that. Assignable, who is actually gonna carry this out? Is it gonna be marketing? Who is in the context gonna carry it out? Realistic, right? Can the results be achieved? Let's say your objective is to increase brand awareness by 10, by 10 or 20%, right? Potentially within the time frame discussed, that may or may not be achievable based upon your particular firm, right? Time related, when will we do it? When are we gonna measure the beginning of the campaign? When is the end of the campaign? Let's focus very concretely on it. When I ask you in the group project to identify three to five objectives of the digital marketing campaign that you're designing, I want you to make sure that they are smart objectives, that they meet all five of these criteria. Part of the, that and part of the way you do that is you develop key progress indicators. Now these are not necessarily objectives in them of themselves, though they could be parts of objectives, but instead they are metrics that determine whether the tactics, the tech, digital marketing tactics you're employing are meeting the objectives. So for instance, a good key progress indicator might be that time spent on my main uh, website page is greater than one minute on average per user, right? That could be an objective that you're trying to engage and that you would do that by increasing content, increasing uh, different aspects of engagement on that page, right? It might be that we want 100 new visitors to our page within the next month, right? Uh, or, or, sorry, the objective would be 100 new visitors. The key progress indicator would be the number of uh, visitors to our website in that particular case. KPIs, in many ways, are the foundation of digital marketing analytics, right? We use them to define what we're interested in measuring. So now that we have our objectives and our KPIs, we can start to discuss tactics. How are we actually going to get uh, these objectives to be met? How are we going to use digital marketing to achieve these objectives? All of the different digital marketing tactics need to be considered and then examined, but not all of them should necessarily be used. Each of them plays a different and unique role in the marketing manager's toolkit. And part of the point of this class and what we'll spend a lot of time on in this class is discussing the role of those different tactics. So as a list of examples, right, you can think of something like um, social media, right? Social media is very good for branding. It's very good for value creation. It's very good for getting your users to participate. It's not necessarily great at something like customer retention, though it can be used in that space, or sales, for instance, sales is an area which it, could, it might fall apart quite a bit. 
SEO, search engine optimization, on the other hand, is good for customer retention and acquisition because people search for your name, they go back to your website, etc. Search advertising, advertising against the searches that come up is good for sales, retention, and acquisition. By the way, you know, search advertising, SEO isn't necessarily great at sales, but it can play that role. Search advertising, you can actually build clicks that say, that are like promotional links, right? That say 25% off your next purchase if you click on this link. Display ads, right? These are these ad banner ads, things like that. Really good for branding, acquisition. Even if people never click on them, by the way, display ads can play a vital role in branding because if people see your brand all the time, they're going to remember it and they're going to associate it in some way, hopefully in a positive way uh, with what your firm is doing. Video marketing, right? Branding, customer retention, value creation. Email, right? Customer retention, value creation. So you should kind of, as you're developing your objectives and your goals, think through these different tactics and think about which ones are actually going to be useful for achieving the strategic objectives that you laid out previously. Right? Finally, after you've put all this together, you've come up with your plan, you need to specify how you're going to do ongoing optimization. You're going to create that never-ending loop that we saw at the beginning. See where you are, create a pair, plan, see where you want, create a plan, see where you are, create a plan, etc. Right? Don't assume that just because you already did digital marketing research on a particular context, that you never need to do it again because you've solved that problem. The old Heraclitus is a Greek philosopher who said no man ever steps in the same river twice. Your customers change, the market change, and the brand changes, right? There is always a chance for you to reevaluate, look at an approach through a different angle and see if it still makes sense. And most importantly, there's always room for improvement in your digital marketing strategy. So that kind of gives you a high level picture. A lot of this course is gonna be filling that out in many respects. But before we get there, we're gonna spend a little bit more time on talking about digital marketing research.